All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is like um, the layering or the 3D art project. You're going to do a background, a mid-ground, and a foreground. And you're going to put it on, eventually put it on like cardboard or foam board. And you're basically setting a scene. So uh, the first thing you're going to do is print off some backgrounds and choose a background that you, of your liking, a setting. And we're going to color that setting in black and white. We're going to paste that eventually on cardboard. Then you're going to create a mid-ground. Things that are going to be in the next level. We're going to cut those out. And, and I'm going to show in there what to do and how to do it in the rest of the video. And then we're going to create characters. And we're going to put that in the foreground. So there's a background, there's a mid-ground, and there's a foreground. Your 3D piece of illustration here are going to have three different layers to it. It's kind of like the same concept uh, that they did, for Walt Disney did for her cartooning. Uh, you had certain animators, they were, uh, they animated the background. Then they had stuff in the mid-ground, and then they had uh, animators that just strictly did the characters, which were in the foreground, and they layered that, creating the illusion uh, that there was depth of field in the cartoon. The, the biggest... Um, Thing when it came out was I do believe Bambi um, especially in the beginning scene because you had different panels moving at different speeds creating the illusion that it was more uh, in reality than uh, animated than it actually was um, rotoscope has been used uh, many times to help with this as well uh, taking actual film and then applying a basically a rotoscope filter over it uh, animating actual real life uh, that's that's something that's relatively been updated and used in uh, movies today so here's the rest of the stuff I give an explanation how to do it we're just getting um, the images ready to paste enjoy <laughs> All right, here we are. I got regular paper, regular copy paper, because that's what we printed off the background. So I'm showing you it's the same size. You want to measure it out, uh, and you want like to lessen down your materials. I understand if you're going to put like a tree or something large in the background that goes all the way up, you don't have to do this. But I do this so that um, I make sure that my background breathes enough and I'm not overwhelming it and covering it up too much. I'm still letting my background shine. Um, that's why we did it. So I'm just drawing stuff out with pencil. This is what you are going to do. You're going to sketch lightly. Lightly. And you're going to get your mid-ground design going on. So once you get done with that, I just stuck with markers. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go with a black marker. And I'm going to go over my design using black marker. Now the wonderful thing about using even these markers here that uh, they're bullet shaped on the front so if you hold them straight up you can get a finer line if you use the side of them you can get a thicker line using a variety of line uh, that we have probably learned in other assignments to have a more compelling piece of artwork. You want thicker lines for what's in front of you, you want thinner lines for what's behind you it's also great for making shadows like I did here with that cross and making dark little shadows in the background. Um, that's helping to show lighting and it helps show distance as well. Uh, for this you can see I have probably a little bit thicker lines for my tombstone that I'm going to write H.G. Wells on. Uh, then what is the cross that's behind it? I'm using that cross being smaller, being behind it, with a little bit thinner line work. To show depth uh, so that mid ground is going to be well the mid ground it's still going to have a certain length to it it's not just a flat plane there is some depth to the plane now I'm coloring it in again I'm going over some spots to get a darker green uh, I'll go over with a blue because blue yellow and blue make green I'll go over the green again with the blue to make more shadows. Uh, I don't have a gray marker, so I, I end up going um, 
uh, with a gray colored pencil to filling that in. You can use marker if you want. Uh, like I said in the previous uh, video, use uh, probably uh, highlighters. They work the best. Uh, using regular markers here is no, no problem, um, as always. So now I'm taking the knife and I am cutting around and cutting this out. Notice that I have something underneath me. You need something underneath you before you cut on my tables. You are not cutting my tables. I was getting a little irritated because I was scratching up um, the paper because it was a dull knife. So I got a sharper knife, put it on an X-Acto blade, and now I'm cutting everything out. Uh, you want to cut away from your fingers, not towards. Notice that every time I use my knife, I am not cutting towards my fingers. I'm cutting towards uh, something away from my fingers. All right. And you want to make sure that you're holding the paper down so that gives you a nice flat surface to cut from as well. Cut reliefs. Notice how I just cut like a couple reliefs and I went back to town. It does not have to be all one piece of the thing that you're cutting out. You can cut out multiple pieces and give you um, less frustration, especially if you're, if you're cutting some stuff out. You want to be careful of the small pieces and make sure that you have a nice cut. Uh, sometimes you're not going to get a cut all the way through the paper. It's going to stick, which means you got to go back with the knife. Make sure you relieve stuff. And you're going to cut it out, and that's going to be your mid-ground. Then we'll paste that on the cardboard, and we'll paste that to the background. This is your mid-ground. Enjoy. Mm -hmm.